Hello guys, how's it going? Today I'll be talking about Monster Hunter World. This is the review for the PC version. I put in close to 60 hours on the game and on a not so decent computer, but that didn't detract from my experience. I was able to play the game just fine. Originally released on consoles, Capcom had many months to fine tune and optimize the game in time for the PC release. We're gonna call it right now, it's not optimized. Certain visual features are missing in the game, one of them being high res textures. Game breaking bugs like your save game files getting corrupt and network issues. But Capcom has fortunately addressed that. You get the idea, it's not optimized for PCs and given the amount of time it took for the PC version to release it after the consoles, I believe it was around 6 months, you would think or hope the PC version would be up to standard with other games. Enough of the bugs and let's talk about the game. Monster Hunter World is a game where you do exactly that, you hunt monsters. It's as simple as accepting a mission, the game refers to it as investigations, and off you go with some weapons and armor and maybe a couple of friends and you hunt monsters. Small monsters and large monsters, birds to lizards to dragons, they've got a nice variety here. The monsters that you successfully hunt will drop valuable items that are needed to craft stronger weapons and armor so you can then hunt stronger monsters who will then drop stronger items and stronger weapons and armor. There are some optional fetch missions and collect missions, but the meat and core of Monster Hunter is monster hunting. No surprises there. You begin your story by choosing what your character looks like and their gender and off you go on a boat sailing across the sea to the new world. You're placed in the role of a high rank hunter in the 5th fleet. On your way, you're interrupted by a large mountain that rises from the water and breaks up the sailing party. Put her there! to be an A-lister myself. Oh, As you go through the game, the story is told through missions that are called investigations and each mission is usually investigate or hunt X monster or monsters. Your character doesn't speak at all, he just nods his head, so there's little emotion or reason to care for your character. What are you doing? Go! You meet some interesting people who help you along the way, but they really are just there to move the story along and get you to your next hunt. There aren't that many surprises and the story doesn't really do much to make you want to progress and find out more. The real reason you want to play is to hunt monsters and boy is it fun. Wow. There are 14 different weapon types to choose from, all with their unique playstyles, strengths and weaknesses. This level of depth in a game is just crazy. You can just spend hours upon hours just testing each weapon to see if it fits your fighting style. It's almost too overwhelming to see the list of weapons because you want to try them all, but as you progress through the game and start gathering items for upgrades, you'll notice that you'll only be able to upgrade two or three weapon types because the game just doesn't give you enough materials to upgrade every weapon. You have to hunt monsters constantly to fill every upgrade tree. So each weapon has an upgrade tree and again, it's very overwhelming. As you upgrade weapons, they increase in damage of course, but some trees also grant elemental damage and ailments that help aid in battle. Missions are done through the post board and you'll find yourself coming here before any mission. You have to. Think of the story missions as regular quests with story cutscenes thrown into them. Hmm. Look at those Kestodon. Something's up around. <laughs> After accepting each mission, you'll be dropped off on the map where that mission is taking place. On every mission, you'll always have your trusted cat companion called a Palico, who will help in battle and support you with buffs and critical healing. You'll find yourself searching for clues and tracks in order to build research on that monster and eventually track it down. There are five distinct open areas in the game for monster hunting, and they are nice and varied from lush green forests to rotting corpse ridden underworlds. Each area has unique flora and items that you'll be picking up constantly to aid in battle such as herbs, antidotes, items that give buffs like boosting attack and defense and items to use in your trusty slinger. You use this a lot. As you progress through the game and especially late game, you find certain items like the flash pod to be vital in survival. You can blind monsters and more importantly, bring flying monsters to the ground, cancelling some of their big attacks. The combat system is varied and that's because of the wide selection of weapons. You can be a heavy hitter and sacrifice speed for power, or you can be nimble and attack swiftly. 
If you don't prefer to be up close and personal with monsters, you can fight at a distance with some of the ranged weaponry. There's a weapon in this game for everyone and it really extends the replayability. Monster Hunter always has a very diverse group of enemies to take down and strategies to consider. Some monsters are weaker than others to certain elements and you need to adjust your weapon accordingly. Each monster feels unique and the game truly makes the monster come alive with their attack patterns and behaviors. The real fun doesn't start until after you beat the game and more opportunities to make stronger gear becomes available. The recipe for fighting monsters to collect items is nothing new, but Monster Hunter takes that formula and creates an amazing and addictive experience. The monster and weapon sound effects are all believable and realistic as they get. It's always satisfying to hear your blade hit a monster's weak spot and equally as satisfying to hear the weapon elemental effects. You really feel the weight and impact of your attacks. The music is a good mix of orchestral notes and always makes it feel like you're on a quest or on some grand mission to save the world. The graphics in this game are not exactly leading edge, but they do manage to create a believable world full of energy. The animations on the monsters are done so well and that really makes them come to life. The armor sets and weapons you create all look amazing. It's one of the reasons why you go out there to hunt, so you can make cool looking armor and some of the armor sets look awesome. They also look different depending on what gender you choose, so kudos to Capcom for doing that and putting in the extra work. Despite some of the technical setbacks and disappointing launch, the game's core mechanics of hunting monsters still shine through. It's addicting and satisfying to hunt and forge items. Playing cooperatively is a plus and I highly recommend that. Who doesn't want to take down a dragon with a couple of buddies? I really hope Capcom finds the time to fix the issues I mentioned earlier and hopefully the great success the game has garnered worldwide spawns a sequel that we can enjoy in the future. My score for Monster Hunter World for the PC is an 8.5 out of 10. Who knew hunting monsters would be so fun? I hope you liked this video, leave a comment and let me know what you think about Monster Hunter World. Hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Take it easy.